Hi everybody, welcome to TK Power Sports. And right in front of me, this is an off-road electric scooter from NAMI. This is the Burn E2. And if you know nothing at all about electric scooters, this is the F1 the Ferrari of electric scooters. It is insane, the performance on this thing, the different features it has, and you're gonna pay for them all, but let's talk about that right now. So let's start with, well, what do you actually get here with this Burn E2? Well, in our situation, our unit was provided to us by NAMI, but we had to go through a dealer and that was Epic Cycles in Vaughan, Ontario. They have a couple locations all over Ontario. Make sure you give them a check out. There'll be a link in the description below. But we had to go down, the guys there hooked us up, but we just got the box. So we got it home and you'll see here, unbox the thing, open up, what do you got? fully assembled unit. You have to flip up the handlebars, attach them, and you are ready to ride. There's literally nothing involved with this one besides putting that handlebar up. Also in the box, you're gonna get a wicked little multi-tool kit to help you adjust things. There are a few adjustments I made here, just rolling the handlebars around a little bit for my own comfort. But overall, not much except the steering damper. This was the only piece of assembly that we had. You actually, this just comes in a box completely separate by itself, and you have to bolt it to the frame as well as dial in and what level of damping you would like for your riding style. And as long as I'm talking about that steering column, why don't I show you? It's a really quick clamp, but NAMI came up with something cool because they had a lot of complaints previously about this. So you actually have to thread this collar up like so until it's loose and then pull up out of the locking device. Oops, come on, there we go and then it folds down. So it's a little bit more involved to get this up and down than previously just sliding on and clamping, but it gives it a much more rigid feel. And you'll notice, especially when you go to take off on some of the more aggressive pulls that you don't have nearly as much flex in those bars as previous models. Now, talking about those aggressive pulls, we have dual hub motors here. We have front and rear 1500 watt motors with peak output of 8400 watts of power and torque. It is so much that we actually decided today on our ride we would do a top speed run and I'm going to show that to you now and I apologize in advance if it's a little shaky. I was holding on for dear life. Check it out. Like I said, speed run, little hairy, but I think I did see 83 kilometers an hour there. I hope that translated. But despite the fact that that was fast and a little crazy, this 13 inch wide deck makes it comfortable. You have lots of options. You've got that grip tape like on a skateboard there. So you've got lots of places to put your feet to really brace yourself and find a comfortable riding position. In addition to that, you've got fully independent front and rear suspension. You've got a small coil over shock with fast adjusting damping. So when we actually got out to the off-road section of today's uh, ride, we were able to adjust that damping for more flex to give you a little bit more, especially going off-road, going over the bumps, over the rocks and stuff, eat up some of that terrain a little better. And then as soon as you got back on the trail, you crank those dials back up and off you go. Now, up on the front of the unit here, you've got a carbon fiber column up to your top fully digital display with all of your information as well as your hand controls you have a thumb base throttle you've got selectable modes here to change your drive modes and turn it on so you can hear it one of my absolute favorites is when you're driving this thing in traffic you've got a cute little horn well let's beep that horn and let's get out on the trail and we'll talk about how this thing performs so i'm on the nami burn e right now and out here on the trail, this thing is absolutely crazy. We've got the suspension damping turned down right now because I don't need that much float. We're on a concrete trail. But when we were off-road with this thing, it just eats everything up. Now, as far as riding position goes, the handlebar is up really tall. I stand just a hair under six foot and like I'm arms almost at 90 degrees. So this is a very tall bar. It's very comfortable position. And as far as the standing position on the deck, I don't mind changing up my standing position as we're going because I've got lots of room to move my feet, different positions. I can kind of snowboard it to the side. I can actually stand feet together going forward too if I'm in a more leisurely mood. 
we've been riding for a little while out here, so I think I want to talk about, you've got a 32 amp hour battery underneath me, and that means our range over here is estimated at 120 kilometers. Today, our ride so far, according to my trip computer, has only been 11 and a half kilometers, and I've barely dropped 10% of this battery. So doing that math in my head real quick, 10% to 10K, yeah, okay, 100 and 100 and change. Now, I'm not the average rider. I've got a few pounds on the average rider, I would say. But overall, if this thing can carry me for 100 kilometers, that's more, that's, that's a crazy amount of range. I only charge this thing once every three days, and I commute about 18 kilometers a day with it. Now, as far as charging does go, uh, you have a five amp fast charger that NAMI provides you with when you order one of these, and it takes about, I'd say overnight. I'll throw that up on screen here, probably estimated between eight and 12 hours for a full charge, but this thing is very livable. You only gotta charge it, you know, once every couple of days, depending on how hard or how aggressive you're riding it. And I mean, it's, like I said, it's livable, it's just expensive. So I think at the end of the day, you gotta boil down, am I willing to pay that extra to have that extra comfort, to have that extra range? Or you know, do I wanna go with a competitor's model that's a little bit more economical, but you know, I gotta kinda of sweat, am I gonna make it or not? So as far as the actual ride out here goes, you know, you got the steering stabilizer, which certainly when you're traveling at higher speeds is handy when you hit a bump and it kind of takes that shock out of the steer for you. Um, as far as controlling this thing, right now I'm running in eco mode, but I like that right here on my left thumb, I've got the easy adjustability so I can go eco up to dynamic, which is the second one. I can go up to S, which is sport, which is also a little crazy. And then in actually in the fourth position, I have a custom mode. So this scooter actually allows you to go in and dial in exactly what you want. Do you want to have 100% output out of the front motor and 9% out of the rear? You can do that. You can change up exactly what you want, how aggressive things are. You can even change things like how bright your screen is in custom mode. You can have it set up for this is my morning commute mode. This is how I want to drive it, which is really cool. Having all that adjustability means it can fit your exact usage purpose, which is always nice. Yeah. When we were off-road today, you'll see some shots here. This soaks up the bumps, and I think the biggest thing that we found was the ground clearance. I haven't actually measured it. We'll measure it when we get back, and I'll throw it up on screen here, but we're clearing rocks that I thought for sure I was gonna bump, for sure I was gonna scrape. And then the other thing too is loose sand and stuff. I thought, oh, it's gonna kick out underneath me. No, it kinda just grabbed and floated through everything. A little bit of speed, obviously, but we had some hills, we had some loose stuff, we had some gravel. We had a lot of fun out there today, kinda surfing through those whoops. Uh, on road, off road, this thing has nearly the same impressive performance, which I really appreciate from NAMI. And uh, like I said, I think the last thing to show here is extreme mode, press and hold. There's my turbo emblem. I'll see you guys later. All right, guys, we're coming to the end of this video. We spent some time out here today on the hard pack trail, as well as some cool off roading, which Kind of, kind of took us both on by surprise. We had a lot of fun out there in the dirt, more than I think I thought I was going to. But this thing comes with a price tag. As I mentioned off the top, this is the Ferrari of electric scooters and you are going to pay for that. Now, because of the dealer-based system, you don't order direct from NAMI. Uh, in Canada, we've seen these run anywhere from $4,500 up to about $5,500, depending on the retailer and what region you're in. So you're paying, you're paying for that performance. and. For the guy that's commuting, I commute with this scooter. You know, it's fast, it's comfortable in the mornings. You know, you're ripping along, you got a nice comfortable stance, you're not worried about anything and you get to work pretty quick. You don't have to worry about charging or range. Sometimes I think it's worth it. Then I look at the price tag of competitors and I go, maybe it's a little over, but overall that doesn't matter. What do you guys think? Do you think this thing is worth it for the value? Would you be interested in riding one? Let us know, jump in the comments below. Let us know what you think and as always, Come back to TK Power Sports to see what we're doing next. Like, follow, subscribe, join to become a member. And you know, I'm gonna head out on the trail now because uh, I've still got 92% on that battery. We've been riding all day, so see ya.